Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday, July 26th. Welcome to the worship service for Horton Bend United Methodist Church. Welcome to everybody watching online. And we are doing something new today. We have video. We have added video in here. So I uh, believe we have several in the video area. So go ahead and unmute everybody. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, let's see if we can see some of these faces. There's Jerry and Sherry and Joe. I hope you don't see mine. <laughs> no, we Sorry, don't. Charlie. <laughs> yep. I got it cut yesterday. He literally got his ears lowered. I did. <laughs> they were up here and now they're down here. <laughs> I got them on here, Rebecca. There's Joe, and Jerry, and Sherry. <laughs> they're like, they're like he's watching on Facebook too. I see, uh, I see Peggy on my screen, but I see her name. Yep. Yeah. So, hello, <laughs> Peggy. Hello, uh, uh, Ron and Rebecca. All right, who is 5613? Is that the Menses? Yes. Hello. Good morning. Hello. 2244 is, is Harold and Linda. Oh, okay. Hello. Hello, Potters. Hello. Hello. All right. Now, who is 66459? That's me, Judy. Okay. Hey, Judy. Hey, Judy. Morning, Judy. Hey, Judy. Good morning, everyone. Well, all righty. Well, this is a, this is a little something new for me as well. But uh, the just hello from everybody from the from the Dismuke household from Asheville, Alabama. Uh, we're all doing well. It's uh, uh, this is kind of interesting, but uh, we're going to see how it all works. And uh, it, it's it's nice to uh, to see everybody. We uh, we had a test call on Monday night, and. Uh, a 10 minute test call lasted an hour and 20 minutes, I think. And it was really, really nice and enjoyable. Yep. It was good, good to have everybody on today. So, uh, uh, I'd like to start us off with a word of prayer, if you would, and, and be thinking about uh, uh, prayer requests. Uh, and we'll do those when we do announcements. But let's, let's all bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today, uh, your humble congregation, and and we uh, we thank you for all the blessings of life. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together today, uh, virtually and through technology. And uh, we just uh, ask that you would bless our time together and uh, help us to be better servants for you. And uh, we just thank you for your many blessings. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, I, I don't know that I have uh, many real announcements to make. Uh, I don't think really anything has changed. Uh, I think for those of you who are going to be involved in the annual conference, it's been moved back. I think is it September, Joey? I think that's yeah. the date. One day conference is uh, September. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jerry, Jerry, you got the links and stuff for that. And I did. Okay. I did. And, and uh, so uh, and anybody else that wants to uh, be involved in that, just let me know and I'll see about getting you. It's going to be held virtually now. Uh, uh, there, there will be some uh, meeting places that, that we can go to to see it on the screen or whatever, but uh, mostly it's going to be done uh, out of caution, uh, just individually from our home. So, uh, are there any other announcements we need to make that I can think of? Anybody can think of? Okay. Well, uh, j just to kind of go over uh, the, the prayer request that we uh, did on Thursday night, I uh, had a pretty good list. Um, I, I do want to add Sonny Morrison. Uh, my friend Tommy's dad, who recently had hip surgery, 
his mom recently broke her leg and now uh, his dad, Sonny, had to have uh, gallbladder surgery, I believe, yesterday. He's having it today. 10 o'clock this morning, we just found out. Uh, also, uh, like for everyone to remember, uh, Sheila Evans, uh, Patsy and Larry Childress, Linda Farley, Joe Nichols, uh, Judy, uh, and her procedure for tomorrow, Doug Smith and his procedure, uh, Judy Browning, uh, Baldwin family, uh, Patsy, Patty Johnson family, all the patients that are in hospitals and healthcare facilities, and all the teachers and students preparing to go back to school. And we also want to remember uh, our friend, uh, guitar player from the Fossil Apostles, uh, Dean Hallmark is having another hip replacement surgery on Wednesday. So let's re remember him and, uh, and Deborah as they go through this again. Hello, Laura. I see Laura's picture. She's muted. Oh, okay. I got you. Are, are there any other prayer requests that we need to lift up? As I like to say, Linda's son-in-law, one of her son-in-laws, uh, Matthew Bearden had a tooth pulled Thursday that uh, Friday that was badly infected in the gum. And he is, uh, he's been in the hospital ever since uh, Saturday night. Um, white blood count was way high. Dennis should never pulled it with infection already there. Anyway, remember him, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Any other prayer requests? this time. Okay, uh, what we will, uh, I guess we will turn it back over to, to Joey and uh, he's got some music for us this morning. Yes, and um, I think I had it to where nobody can unmute herself, but I unmuted Peggy and Laura. So if you, if you two can hear us, good morning. I can hear you, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. There we go. All we right. All right. Well, let's get into some music here. I'm going to mute everybody again um, and then quit sharing my camera because you don't want to see me during this. So, all right. So, songs this morning for you if I can get it to advance here. All right. First 10 this morning is going to be Blessed Assurance.
next hymn this morning, Grace Greater Than All Our Sin. This morning, I am thine, O Lord.
my list here and get Joe unmuted. Uh, Joe, I don't, I can't unmute you on here. Um, so if you hit that unmute button, you should be good. Okay. Can you hear me now? There we go. Perfect. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just saying that uh, thank you to Mr. Potter and Charles and Joey uh, for leading those songs for us this morning. Um, brought back a lot of good memories and uh, it uh, uh, makes me uh, long uh, for the day that we can do it again in person. So uh, at this time, I would uh, invite everyone uh, to join me wherever you are, uh, either aloud or say it to yourself. I invite you to join with me in affirming our faith as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you all for joining us for that. And now uh, I would like for us all to bow our heads as, uh, as we bless the offering that we have received this week. Let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, uh, I thank you uh, for blessing us every day uh, for all that we need. And we just ask you to bless these tithes and offerings that we have received, that we might be better servants for you on this earth. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
All right, Joe, turn it back over to you and just unmute yourself one more time for me. There you go. I'm learning. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, just want to remind everybody of all the names and situations that were mentioned earlier. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that there are plenty of unspoken prayer requests. Uh, and we will lift those up as well. And then we, we will close uh, with, the, with the Lord's Prayer as we, as we have been. So I invite you all now to uh, bow your heads and, and pray with me. Great God in, in heaven, we uh, come before you today uh, with humble hearts, knowing that uh, because of the sin in our lives, because of our humanness, we have uh, failed you in the days past. And Lord, as your humble servants, we uh, repent of our sins and we seek to turn away from that sin in our lives today. And Lord, we ask your forgiveness. And because we know that you love us unconditionally, we know that uh, forgiveness is ours and, and, and we humbly thank you. Thank you for loving us. Lord, we especially thank you today for sending your son Jesus to this earth to live as a human, to teach us, to guide us, to give us uh, his holy words for us to live by. Lord, we thank you for the salvation that, that we receive by believing in him as our Lord and Savior. Lord, all the prayer requests that have already been mentioned, Lord, all the hands that are being lifted up to you to represent unspoken prayers, uh, we lay all of these at your feet today. We know that you are the great physician, the great healer, all powerful, God of heaven, God of our lives, God of eternity. Lord, we pray and we ask that your will be done for all of these requests today. Lord, we ask you to help us, each one of us individually, to do what is right in your eyes, to live a righteous life, seeking to serve you better today than we did yesterday. Lord, seeking to be perfect, even though we know it's not possible while we're alive on this earth. Help us to do better, Lord. Give us strength and courage to make the right decisions. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit who guides us and directs us and helps us every day. Lord, we're so thankful for our extended church family. Uh, it's much far reaching than the Horton Bend community or Etowah County. Lord, we ask a special blessing on each family, each church, and each community that is represented. Lord, help us to be the shining lights in our community and in our families' lives. We ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. And now, Lord, may the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All right. Um, I uh, I know I went a little bit long yesterday summarizing, not really summarizing, but just uh, mentioning a verse uh, from every chapter of Proverbs. Uh, may uh, go a, a, a little bit uh, shorter today, at least I hope so. But uh, I just want to talk with you today. Uh, you know, I, I look around and I see what's going on in the world today. And, 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 I, and I don't know if you're like me, but uh, it's troubling. It's, it's a little bit disturbing. And, and, I, and I know uh, if you read the paper, watch television, look for information on the internet, there's a lot of scary things out there. But I just want each one of you to know something that I know and something that, that I take hold of every day in my life is that uh, God is with us. God is there, even though he doesn't seem like he's there sometimes when all the things that are going on in our lives. I just want everybody to, to take heart that uh, God is, is in heaven, wherever that may be in this universe or another universe or wherever God is, he's there and he cares about us and he's watching over us today. Just a, a, a few things that I, I want you to think about. That uh, if you ever feel like God's not there, God doesn't care, or God's not watching, God is watching. God was watching when Adam and Eve ate the fruit in the Garden of Eden. Now, I know Eve gets a lot of uh, flack for being the one who talked Adam into doing it, but you've heard me say it many times, and I, I hold fast to the idea that Adam was just as much to blame as Eve was, if not more. But God was watching. God was watching not long after that when Cain killed Abel. He asked Cain where his brother was, and he, he says, am I my brother's keeper? God was watching. God was watching a while later when all he saw was evil in all the world, and we know what he did then. He sent a flood and destroyed everything and everyone but Noah and his family and an ark full of animals. God was watching and he changed Abram's name to Abraham and made him the father of many nations. God was watching when the Hebrew children went down into Egypt and became slaves for 400 years. And he sent Moses to lead them out. God was watching. God was watching when he anointed, had Samuel anoint Saul as king over Israel, but he also saw Saul turn away from him. It did not carry out God's instructions. Let's fast forward to the, to the New Testament for a minute. God was watching when they crucified our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God was watching on the first day of Pentecost. God was watching during the 900 years of the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages in Europe after the fall of the Roman Empire. 
God was watching Martin Luther nailed the 95 theses on the church door. And that became the birthplace of Protestantism as we know it today. God was watching in 1976 when the rebels of the United States declared their independence from Great Britain. <clears throat> God was watching when the United States raged a civil war in the 1960s. God was watching when over 40 million people died or were wounded in World War I. God was watching when between 70 and 85 million people died during World War II. Just kind of brings you down through the history of we know it from the Bible moving forward. And I think we would all agree that, that God was watching. And the comforting part is that God is still watching today. Maybe comforting for some, Maybe a little scary for others, but nonetheless, God is still watching today. Now, I want to uh, share with you some scripture, something that we've uh, shared before and talked about before. It is uh, an Old, Test Old Testament book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. And you'll remember uh, that story. Uh, I mentioned to you a minute ago when God rejected Saul as king. When he re rejected Saul, he sent Samuel to anoint David as the new king of Israel. And starting in uh, verse 1, 1 Samuel chapter 16, it says this, says, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived in Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled. When they met him, they asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Aminadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shama passed by, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Je Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. 
we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word today. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat> well, I have stipulated earlier that God is still watching. I, I would hope everyone would agree with that. And if God is still watching, like we say, a question I have is what does God see today? What's God thinking today? Surely he must be scratching his head. But what does God see? What does God see when he sees how we are treating the environment? Now, I don't know that any of us who are listening to this today would be guilty of doing things negative to the environment. Maybe we are, maybe we're not. But overall, civilization as we know it on the earth today, what does God see when he looks at how we are treating the environment? I think back to the to the very first point that I made today about God watching, back to the Garden of Eden, how it must have been perfection, a beautiful place. And I firmly believe that there were no mosquitoes in the Garden of Eden. I may be wrong, but I just believe that there weren't any mosquitoes there. I don't know about you, but I hate mosquitoes and I long for a place that's perfect and wonderful and paradise and doesn't have mosquitoes. But the earth today, I wonder how God looks at how we are treating it. What does he see when he wonders if we, are we obeying the 10 commandments? And we just spent several weeks going over the 10 commandments. And just a, a reminder, no other gods before me, no idols. Do not misuse God's name. Remember the Sabbath. Honor your mother and your father. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Do not covet what your neighbor has. What does God see when he looks around the world today? Are we obeying the Ten Commandments? Very simply, we could uh, summarize that the way Jesus did. Are we loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, body, and strength? And are we loving our neighbors as ourselves? I firmly believe that if we're doing those two things, then that takes care of the Ten Commandments. We're all doing good. Unfortunately, I think most people cannot say that. What does God see when he looks at our government leaders and politicians? worldwide, in our nation, in our state, in our counties, in our cities and towns. What does God see?
What does God see when he looks down the things that are happening in our streets today? Now, these last two points, talking about our government leaders and what's going on in the world today, and this is nothing political. I'm not pointing fingers at one side or the other, and I hope you all understand that. This, when it, said that, when it says in the Bible that God is no respecter of persons, doesn't matter what political party you are, what matters to God is if you love him, are you living by the Ten Commandments? Are you doing what is right in his eyes? That's how God judges people. Unfortunately, there is a, and I think we could uh, generalize this by saying there are a few bad apples out there in all respects, in all vocations. Unfortunately, those few bad apples makes all the rest of the good apples go bad, or at least seem to be bad. But I can tell you, just like with the police, just like politicians, teachers, people in business. I think there's a lot more good people out there than there is bad. Unfortunately, the bad is what we hear more of. Well, let's just make this a little bit more personal today. What does God see when he looks in our homes? What does God see when he looks at what's going on in our homes. Statistics say that spousal abuse is way up, especially this year during the pandemic. Statistics say that child abuse is way up during this pandemic. So what does God see? Uh, un unfortunately, uh, it may not uh, be too pleasing to him what he's seen. And I'm not trying to be Mr. Negative Nancy today, but I, I think we would all agree that we're not perfect and we have room to grow and do better because we're not perfect. But what does God see? What does God see when he looks into our hearts? Because, you know, humans judge a lot on outward appearance and performance. And I'm so thankful that, that God doesn't do that. He looks at what's in our hearts. Just like going back to our scripture today, when he sent Samuel in to anoint the new king of Israel, he picked out the oldest, and the best looking, strongest, muscular, handsome son of Jesse, the logical firstborn thing. But that's not who God chose. He chose the youngest. He chose the teenager. He chose David because he looked in David's heart. And he knew that he would be described later on as a man after God's own heart. But what does God see when he looks in our hearts? We are uh, a telling people by what we do and what we say 
in how we act. But a lot of us, a lot of people in this world today are good at hiding things. But I just want everyone to know, and I think you already know it already, but there's no hiding anything from God. We might be able to hide it from our coworkers, hide it from our spouses, hide it from the folks in our congregation. But God sees everything and he sees directly into our hearts. He knows what we are thinking. Before we even think, he knows we're going to think that. It's really hard for us to grasp that concept of the superpower that God has to look into our hearts and know everything that's going on. But I want us all to just stop for a minute today and, and just think about that. I've always heard that the character is how a man acts or a person, man or woman. Character is how someone acts when no one's watching. Well, I can tell you, folks, that God is always watching. And we may not allow our spouses or our bosses or our coworkers to see what we're doing or what we're thinking, but God knows that. And I think if everyone on the face of this earth conducted themselves and acted with a respect to God that he was watching everything, he sees everything, he knows everything, I think this world would be a much much better place in which to live. May not be as good as the Garden of Eden, but it would be a whole lot better than it is now. Now, I'm not being Mr. Negative about America. I love America. There's no other place on this earth that I would rather live. But I think we would all agree that there's a lot that we can do to make it better. There's not a lot that any of us can do about what's going on in Seattle or Portland or any of the other cities. There's not a lot that we, that we can do about the, the violence that's happening in a lot of cities today other than pray. Now we can do that, but what we can do is take control of what we say, what we do, how we treat people, and what we think. And I just want to challenge everyone today that's hearing this to think about God is always watching. And let's conduct ourselves in a way that would honor him, that would follow his commandments, that would help us to do right in God's eyes and therefore making this world, maybe our small little world here in Alabama, a lot better place to live. I challenge you all to join me today to let's think about everything we say, everything that we do, everything that we think and make it honor God in all areas. If you would, let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the story of Samuel and David today. We thank you for reminding us that you are always watching. Lord, I ask you to help us to do what's right in your eyes so that when you look at us, you will think, well done, my good and faithful servant. But until that day of perfection comes, Lord, I ask you to help us. Help us each day in all that we say, in all that we do, in all that we think. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Joe. Our closing hymn this morning is going to be something about that name. Joey, thank you. Uh, thank you for that song, and uh, thank you for Mary and Pat and Don. Uh, that was six years and four months and like 11 days ago. Uh, brought back a lot of good memories. Uh, we've sung that song uh, a lot of times uh, since then, and, and, and I tell you, it's, it's hard for me to sing that song and not think about Mary. But uh, I just want to thank each one of you uh, for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of the Sabbath, and I hope your uh, week goes well. I invite you to uh, join us on Thursday night at uh, 7 o'clock, and uh, we'll be doing it the same format. Uh, you'll have video and call-in options. It'll be broadcast on Facebook and the same deal. So. Thank you all. Any other, uh, uh, well, let, let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you and ask a blessing on each person. Help us to go forward today uh, doing what is right in your eyes because Lord, we know and we understand that you are always watching. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs>